Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the fourth, or technically fifth and final episode of my around the country road trip. So, in episode one, I drove from Chicago to Memphis. Episode two, I drove from Memphis uh, through, down through Dallas to El Paso, up to Phoenix. Uh, episode two and a half or three, whatever you want to call that, was a day trip to Sedona, Arizona. That was an epic day trip because there was lots of range anxiety. Way more than I thought there would be. Um, sorry for my stuttering of words. It is 40 degrees out here and my body is fully used to the 105 degree temperatures I had in Phoenix for two weeks. So it is, it is cold nonetheless. <laughs> but uh, episode three, I drove from Phoenix to Las Vegas and then Las Vegas to Cedar City, Utah and Cedar City, Utah, up to Salt Lake City, where I've been for the last couple days. But now is where it gets intense. I'm going from Salt Lake, here in Salt Lake City, technically I'm down in Spanish Fork already. I did the first uh, 30 miles this morning. It was, it was dark out. This is much more beautiful scenery to enjoy the sunrise at this Walmart here. It's one of the most scenic Walmarts I've ever been to too. I mean, look at the mountains all around. Pretty epic scenery. But I'm going from Salt Lake City all the way back to Chicagoland in two days. So this will definitely be the longest episode. It'll also be just the most intense of like needing every charger to work just to hope I can make it in time. Uh, right now it is 5.49 in the morning. So it is very early, I'm very tired, but it is nonetheless time to get the show on the road. So let's talk about the car for a brief moment and see what our state of charge is and come up with a little bit of a plan. As you hopefully may know from previous episodes and um, if you watch the any of our other road trips, we have the 2021 Volkswagen ID4 first edition, 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, 77 kilowatt hour usable, about 250 uh, EPA rated miles. In cold weather like this, we're lucky if I can get 200 even, honestly. Um, I don't know which way the wind is blowing yet. I'll have to look at it, but it's cold and, that, and using the heat just really deteriorates this car since it does not have a heat pump in the US. Pretty big miss in my opinion on Volkswagen. I would gladly have paid $1,000 more to get more efficiency in the winter because I'm using the heater all winter long in Chicagoland. Uh, but anyway, I am, I arrived at this charging station at 53%, charged up to 62%. As you can see, the cold battery is resulting in very slow charging speeds, which is why I'm actually gonna unplug because I only need 40% to get to a very small town called Price, Utah. So Price, Utah is only 68 miles away. Now I'd like to go all the way to Green River, but I'm gonna need 75, 80%, not worth sitting here at this slow charging speed. When I can go to Price, they have a free charge point unit. So I'm only gonna see 62 to 75 um, kilowatt peak speeds, but that's still significantly better than here. And the charger is literally right off the road. And I've never been to it, so it's exciting to always see a new charging stop. Also exciting when it's early in the morning, I'm tired, just break up the drive as much as possible and do more charging stops. I'm really looking forward to Green River in a few hours because uh, the Green River coffee house, I think it's called, or Green River Mountain Coffee House, something like that. Very good breakfast. I've been there once before on one of our previous trips uh, when I did, I think that was the Vegas to Tahoe kind of around the country trip there too. That was pretty epic too. Or that might've been the Glacier trip. Like I said, if you haven't seen our trips, please check them out because we do everything we can to teach uh, how to best road trip an NEV with the least uh, amount of issues and how to do it as fast as possible as well. Um, to not charge all the way to 100%, to, you know, to charge or hop, just take what you need to get to the next destination, which is what I'm doing right here in the morning. I'm already charged up enough to get to Price. So I'm gonna do go to Price, charge up a little bit there, get to Green, uh, Green River, and then we'll go from there and we'll kind of look at the plan a little de uh, deeper. From Salt Lake City, I could have gone across to Vernal. I did that in that um, Vegas Tahoe trip. That was a huge stretch. I needed to be almost 100%. And actually, with this cold weather, I don't know if from Park City, Utah, if I could make it to Vernal. Um, it would be way too much of a stretch. 
Plus all those chargers are incredibly slow and incredibly expensive. Um, so I only add an hour of travel time going the Southern route back to Green River, but I save well over $100 in uh, charging cost because the Volkswagen comes with three years of free charging. Something else to note with that is I'm 4,000 miles into my current road trip, or near makes no difference, and I've spent $20 on charging. If I was using a gas car, that would be well over $500 in fuel with today's current prices. So feels really nice to have done all this travel so far and uh, pretty much not spent anything. It was basically free travel. So uh, it's been a real treat driving this car for so long, almost 30,000 miles on it. By the end of today, it'll be over 30,000 miles. Um, but like I said, time to unplug, drive 68 miles down the road to Price, Utah. I made it to Price, Utah. Um, I might have been able to make it all the way to Green River, but it was gonna be really close and the weather is just so cold. So I think it just makes sense to stay here for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, something small, just to get a little bit extra juice, just to ensure that I can make it to um, Green River without needing to do any sort of like range conservation. I can still use my heat and still drive the, the speed limiter a little more. But Volkswagen looking crazy dirty. Uh, I had a little bit of snow and rain that we were do encountered while we were in Salt Lake City. Didn't clean off the car clearly. So it's gonna need a thorough bath when I get home. But uh, yeah, charge up here for five, 10 minutes and then off to Green River, Utah. Also just wanna quickly point out the speed of these units, 73 kilowatts right now. So uh, a lot better than those 50s that we encounter all the time. Wish these were full 125 or something more, but hey, can't uh, can't complain. Thanks to the city of uh, Price, Utah for the free charging. Also, uh, <laughs> as you saw, it was down to 18 degrees on the drive, Freaking cold. All right, we are charged up to 40% or very close to 40%. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the charge, which, yeah, these screens never never work. All right, so when the screen, touch screen's being very sensitive like that, all you do, go in here and get your charge point card and just tap it and it stops the charge immediately. It's that simple. Don't mess around with the screen. If it's giving you fits, just get the card and tap. All right, next stop, Green River, Utah.
Utah. Um, charged up to 67% already. I went inside in the Green River Coffee House right here. Got a uh, coffee and a bagel. Um, I wish I could charge to a higher percentage and skip the next charger, Grand Junction, because it's a solid 10 plus minutes off the highway. But unfortunately, I don't know if it's just the weather or the wind or something, there's no way I can make it from here, even with 100% straight to um, Glenwood Springs. So um, yeah, I've got enough here to get to Grand Junction, Colorado. And uh, so I guess off to Sam's Club it is. charging up here in I'm not sure if you can see the screen arrived with 8% getting 73 kilowatts right now at 65% out uh, here at the Sam's Club in Grand Junction Colorado uh, that's plenty all I need is 50% to get to Glenwood Springs which is the next charge down the road it's uh, about 88 miles away but I was uh, doing some shuffling around the stuff you want to use the restroom all stuff I think I'm gonna take a quick nap try to get refreshed for the next few legs since it's going to be all the mountain driving so take a nap for about an hour or so and then uh i'll hit the road and be off to glenwood springs i'm going to take it off the charger though because the charger will it will be at 100 percent within like 20 30 minutes and i don't want to get over fees of just sitting here so 66 is enough i'll go ahead and unplug and then go take my nap and then we will leave all right i just took a little uh, hour and a half power nap feel a little rejuvenated time to go drive in the mountains so first stop i believe is 88 miles down the road to glenwood springs also i wanted to note that i ran the ac for most of that hour and a half nap and not a single percent came off i mean the, the battery pack could be adjusting itself that um you know maybe when it said 66 it didn't actually had a little bit more but either way uh there was not any considerable range loss by any means um during that nap running the AC during that time. So pretty good efficiency there at least.
All right, you join me in beautiful Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Nice red rocks there. Check out this camo Jeep that just went by. Nice. Uh, not the best uh, charging setup here, it looks like. Charger one, according to the app, is, well, there, there's the screen, unavailable. As you can see, the Chatterbone unit looks like it's unavailable the way the cords are dangled over there. Uh, unit three in the app claims it's available. However, the screen is definitely not working. So I'm not 100% sure about that. But charger number two, ramping up right now. So thankfully we are the only ones here so we can charge. Let's, uh, let's hope we're getting full speed right away once the screen uh, populates with info. And then I think I'm gonna go, go into Target and I don't know, find a snack to eat or something like that. All right, so we arrived with 18%, getting pretty much full speed right away, can't complain. Just happy the unit's working too. Um, we need about 60% to make it to Frisco. Uh, that's where the uh, elevation of the Rockies is really always shows tr uh, true in this drive. Yeah, so from here to Frisco, we need, it's only 91 miles, but we need 60% just to make it. That again, just shows how the elevation is and again shows why I continue to use the Better Route Planner app is I've used it so much over the last um, year and month right now, over, yeah, last 13 months. Um, it just consistently is incredibly accurate, factors in the weather and all that sort of stuff. So just really helpful to have, a, have an app that figures all the information out for me so I don't have to waste my, waste my time calculating. All right. All right, we are charged up to 66, 67% now. So I'll go ahead and stop. For some reason, Pizza Hut was closed. So I had, uh, I got Starbucks for lunch and I had some leftover pastries from this German bakery we went to in Salt Lake City. So uh, I guess that's my lunch for now. Here's a pizza place I'm really, really looking forward to going to in uh, Breckenridge or Frisco area. So that's where I'll probably eat a meal in the next uh, hour or so.
here charging up in uh, Frisco, Colorado, Rivian backing out. There was actually a second Rivian that was right here when I first got here. Uh, charging up on, we used charge number one first, was getting pretty poor speeds, only like 30 kilowatt. So then moved over here and, oh, charging session just bricked. I was getting 103. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, this has been less than ideal. Charger one did not, uh, that was only delivering 30 kilowatt. Charger four was delivering like 103, but then bricked. But now charger three is only delivering, I think 60, come on, 64. So I'm stopping that. We're gonna go back to charger four here that bricked uh, and just hope for better luck the second time. All right, it took some fussing around, but finally got a good charge session out of this charger. I ordered some food down there, so I'm gonna go uh, unplug and pick it up. I should have enough to make it to Fort Morgan, Colorado from here. Uh, if not, there's a lot of bailout options in uh, downtown Denver, but I'll try to avoid those since there can be sometimes a little bit of a hassle and busy and whatnot. So I think I can get from here, especially with all the regen down the mountains, all the way to Fort Morgan, Colorado. I just got an excellent pizza from Spinelli's Pizza and Subs. I think it's kind of a local chain, something like that. Snow is starting to fall. It's time to hit the road. And it's uh, bittersweet because I'm about to exit the mountains and then be back in the Great Plains. I'm here in Fort Morgan, Colorado. I cannot believe how many Rivians I've seen. The entire first 4,000 miles of the trip I saw zero, and this is I think my fifth one since then. They're everywhere. All right, first attempt did not initialize, but it sounds like the second one is ramping up right now. Let's see what kind of speed we can get. We arrived with 12%. Excellent, ramped right up to full speed. Um, so this is one of the better charging sessions we've had today because a lot of them have been a little bit power limited. They seem to be like in the 90s or 100s or even the 115 area, but uh, this is the full 124 right away. So pretty good. Uh, now I got to look at, I know we have to charge like 70 some percent because Ogola is quite a drive. I'm going to look that up right now. Yeah, so we need to charge to 77%. So this will be a long charge. I'm going to go hit the restroom and come back and see where we're at. All right, we are charged up to almost 77%. It is 129 miles to Ogala, so about a 
hour and a half or a little longer drive or closer to two hours actually uh so yeah off to the next stop and we'll be in nebraska All right, I finally made it to Ogola, Nebraska. Uh, for some reason, the screen is frozen on this unit, but I've confirmed in the app, we are receiving the full 125 kilowatts. We only need about 35% to make it to North Platte. It's only like 45 miles down the road. So I'm just gonna take what I need here and head off to the next destination. Right now, I'm gonna go run inside real quick. We made it here, by the way, with uh, 6%. So should be a very quick, like 10, 15 minute charge. As I mentioned, the screen not working for whatever reason, but uh, we're about 36%, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and uh, we'll drive 45 miles down the road and get to um, North Platte. Also wanted to remind you for your viewing pleasure, I washed the windows and then I ran in and used the restroom, but uh, pretty quick charging stop. Nebraska. I uh, arrived with 11%. I was using charge number two right there. Um, and for like three or four minutes, it worked perfectly. And of course, that's right when I walk into Walmart. And, and then it, uh, I, I checked the app and I saw that it's down to 35 kilowatts. So not sure what's going on there. Um, I think that sometimes that has to do with like an issue with the cooling system on the cables, but uh, not 100% sure. But now I switched over to charge number three. And that is uh, ramped right up to 125 as well. So hopefully this one holds steady and we can get the get up to 40%. That's what we're looking to get. And just like that, a lightning quick charge to get up to 37%. Look at that, six minutes. Plus we did another eight minutes over here. So total of 14 minutes charged and we're already ready to get 62 miles down the road to Lexington, which is where I might be sleeping tonight. I don't know, I'll see how I feel when I get there. Right, I am here in Lexington, Nebraska. And uh, as I rolled up, this charger was marked unavailable. I'm like, wow, that's weird timing that as soon as I rolled up, it happened. But uh, so I went ahead and tried with this one. I tried uh, with handle number two twice. Uh, wouldn't initiate for some reason. I tried with handle number one and it's working great right now. So sometimes it's just a little finicky and uh, you know, if it, if it doesn't work the first time, just try with a different handle, try a different charger. and. You know, hopefully, ideally, something should be able to uh, charge the vehicle. But uh, there's Walmart, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm very sure it's closed. Nothing really to do around here. There's a Scooter's Coffee House that I'm used to getting when I'm here in the morning, and then a McDonald's and stuff like that around here. But uh, not usually through here at nighttime. Usually this is always timed 
kind of worked out to be a place we're stopping in the morning, like early morning, like 6 a.m. or something or 5 a.m. But uh, here we are now we're trying to make it to Kearney in Nebraska, which is, I think, another like 45 miles away or so. So even though I'm trying to make it to Kearney, Nebraska, I need to make sure I charge up enough here to make it all the way to Grand Island because that's the next Electrify America charger is in Grand Island. So that's actually, I think it was 76 or 80 miles away from here. So even though Kearney is only 45 or something like that, I need to make sure I charge to at least 50%. Um, and then I should be good that I'll pull over, go to sleep. And then, because I don't think there's a charger at the hotel I'm most likely staying at. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so then I'll be able to go wake up in the morning and go to Grand Island, which is that uh, quality in charger that's very tired. <laughs> uh, so hope, hoping those units are still ticking and then uh, we'll be off to start our day tomorrow. But I'm just been very happy that I kind of pushed myself a little bit to get, get a couple more stops in tonight because it just uh, takes hours off of tomorrow's drive. There goes the car carrier full of Rivians, pretty sweet. All right, I am charged up to 53%. I, I did about 5% more than I needed uh, just to play it safe since the battery's gonna probably cold soak overnight. It's down to 40 degrees already. Um, so it's likely that I'll be a little less efficient tomorrow, first thing in the morning. So it's good to have just a little extra buffer. So, uh, yep, so now I'm gonna head off to, I just booked a hotel in Kearney, Nebraska and uh, hopefully get a good quality night's sleep and then be back on the road tomorrow morning. Good morning from Grand Island, Nebraska. I actually went to sleep in Kearney, which was like about a half hour westy here. Um, but I woke up in the morning, just wanted to hurry over here, get to the charger. Um, already charged up, great charging session. I was worried about the battery being a little cold overnight, but since I was so lazy and didn't leave till almost uh, 10.30 from the hotel, the sun had enough time to warm up the battery. Got here, got an excellent charging session. Already at 52%, which is uh, all I need to get to Lincoln, Nebraska. I think that's about 86 miles down the road, I'm pretty sure. Um, had a decent night's sleep at some, I don't know, some motel. I don't exactly remember the name of it. It was called like Victoria Inn. I don't know, it was, it was well rated on hotels.com, so I have no complaints there. Um, but yep, gonna head 86 miles down the road to Lincoln, Nebraska, and that'll be, uh, I think that'll be our last stop in Nebraska, and then I'll be off to Iowa, should hopefully get home, I don't know, 10, 10 o'clock, midnight, somewhere in that range. I haven't completely charted out how many hours the whole day will be, but I'm happy that I pushed so hard yesterday to get all the way to Kearney, Nebraska. So it just leaves today a little bit shorter day. Yesterday was huge, almost a thousand mile day. Today, a lot less than that, thankfully. with 13% 
here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I already charged up to 40. I only need 35% to get to Council Bluffs, Iowa, or I guess it's, yeah, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Um, but I am going to lunch in Omaha, so I wanted to get, get an extra couple percent just in case I lose any, depending on the extra miles I'm adding. So 40% should be plenty. I can unplug now, and then I'll head 62 miles down the road to Council Bluffs, Iowa with about a, I don't know, 10 mile detour in Omaha. Charged up to 68%. Uh, I have an issue. I got a monitor. My tire pressure warning on my left rear started popping up. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. I'll definitely uh, measure it again at the next stop. But until then, uh, it's about 116 miles off to Waukee, Iowa. Welcome to Waukee, Iowa. Uh, crazy winds. I, I should point it out. I uh, turned the camera on a couple times when there was like trucks that were flipped over. So crazy winds going on through here. We arrived with 1%. So I had been having like a 5% buffer at most stops. This one did not work out that way. I'm sure the wind was probably the reason for that as well as a little bit of speed through Iowa. But uh, either way, we're ramping up right now and hopefully let's get a good charging session here because these Iowa ones are much longer stretches. When we're going through Nebraska, we're basically charging and then driving like 70 or 80 miles but through iowa they're all like 110 mile stints so probably need to charge to around i don't know 65 70 percent here and then uh from walkie we will go to williamsburg iowa um so yeah let's see what kind of speeds we're getting all right ripped right to 120 right away um it should go up to 125 hopefully but either way uh it's good to see top speed right away and Let's go take a look at uh, how long to the next destination. According to a better route planner, we need to charge to 55%, so it should be about a 25 minute to 30 minute charging stop total. Um, I'm gonna charge it to 60 just to make sure we have a little bit of a buffer in there. And then it 
will be 101 miles to Williamsburg, Iowa. All right, an EV6 and another Volkswagen just showed up now. Busiest charger I've seen on the drive uh, between yesterday and today. I'm already at 61%, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug. It actually was a quicker charging session than I uh, expected. It was only 24 minutes. Now it's done a couple minutes ago. Technically, it was just getting some work done. But, uh, yep, on to 101 miles down the road to Williamsburg, Iowa. I'm here in Williamsburg, Iowa. Ride with 4%. Charging session going pretty well so far. Uh, I got distracted and was talking to the this owner of the Leaf Plus over here. They're pretty happy with their car. They're thinking of going hydrogen when they move to California. Uh, I hope that should be a pretty cool experience. Um, thinking of walking over to McDonald's. I haven't had, really had fast food this entire trip, so I kind of like want to see if I can avoid it other than like that one Whataburger I had on the way out. But no, uh, no, starting to get a little hungry but I also know that there's a couple of food options over in Geneseo, Illinois, which is my next stop. I only have about another 10 or 15 minutes charging here to get to, I think I need about 62% to uh, make it to Geneseo. It's 107 miles from here to Geneseo. Car is completely filthy, desperately need a bath. It's, a, it's one of the first times I've ever done like a road trip where I've gone this long without like inclement weather. I guess I had a little bit of a blizzard yesterday, but there hasn't been any rain to clean off the front of the car. It is just covered with bugs. Fans are running pretty hard right now trying to keep the battery cool. I've noticed with that uh, better, or with the uh, OBD dongle through a better root planner, the battery temp gets up to 120 degrees when it's doing these, uh, when it's at the peak of the fast charge before it starts ramping down, which is right where it's at right now. It's at 43%, so the speed's probably around 100 or so. Yeah, down to 104, so it is uh, fighting to keep the car cool. The sun is setting on my final day of this epic three-week vacation. Uh, now I'm charged up to 62%, so I should have enough to make it to Geneseo, so I'll go ahead and stop. 61, 62%, basically the same. Um, go ahead and unplug and drive 107 miles down the road to what might be the last charging stop of the trip. Depends on how, whether I'd rather stay there longer or whether I'd rather go to Joliet, which is not my favorite charging spot. So I can either overcharge like 85% and make it home from Geneseo or I uh, charger hop and stop by Joliet. To be decided, but now let's hit the road.
All right, just went and got some Culver's, which uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, is some of the first fast food I've had, like, this whole trip. So it feels, like, toxic. <laughs> but Culver's was back over there. Uh, car is right over here, charging up. It's at uh, just over 65% right now, which we only needed 66% to get to Joliet, Illinois. The other option is to wait all the way until 88%. But then I have a really long stretch to get all the way home. I'd rather just charge or hop, go to Joliet. It's pretty much right off the highway. It's not really out of the way. It's just not my favorite place to be. But I'll go there. It's only 113 miles down the road. So definitely have enough right now. I think I'm going to try to clean the windshield real quick. And uh, then I'll be off to Joliet, which will be the last charging stop of the trip. All right, you join me here in Joliet, Illinois at the final charging stop of the trip. It has been an epic trip. I have, uh, it's really been a dream experience to take three weeks and just travel the country this way. Uh, it was pretty awesome. And most importantly, or not most importantly, but one of the great factors of using this car was the three years of free Electrify America charging paid off huge with how much money I saved. Uh, and I'll put all that data here at the end, but uh, I'm only 51 miles from home, so I only need about 25%. Probably gonna charge up closer to 40, so I have enough to get to work tomorrow, and then I'll just uh, level two charge at work while I'm there. But uh, up to 23% right now. Going a little bit slow, it's going to 110 kilowatts instead of 125, but on uh, the charge I'm trying to do, that only adds a couple minutes, so now I'm not gonna deal with trying to move around to a different charge, I'll just leave it on this one now we can go jump inside and uh, look at some of the data pr preliminarily and then uh you know once i have a time time once i have a chance to go through every single charging stop i did on the trip and compile all the data uh, like i said i'll put all of that at the end but um it's just been an awesome experience another great trip with the volkswagen id4 so let's uh jump in here uh, today is a whole 630 miles, and then uh, we averaged 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, and uh, long-term trip as a whole, 5,559 miles, and like I said, add another 51 to that, so we're going to be at 5,620 miles, if my math adds up correctly there, and 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, I know there was so much driving through Texas at high speeds. There was winter conditions in the mountains in Colorado. So I kind of experienced a little bit of everything. There was incredible wind and rain that started the trip back when I was on my way to Memphis. So I'd say 2.6 is pretty good considering all the conditions we experienced. And um, yeah, definitely the longest trip I've ever taken in this car. That's for sure. So I think at this point, uh, I've, I've proven through all of these road trips that uh, electric cars are here and they are ready for uh, ready for whatever you throw at them. Um, you know, I, I, I still would say if people are hesitant about road trip and electric car, that's fine. You can always rent a car or other solutions for how you handle your, your travel. But uh, as I've shown many times with the Electrify America network, um, you know, that there, there may be some little problems here and there, but all in all, they really are doing a great job at uh, improving reliability. And, you know, uh, throughout this trip you saw, I might've showed up to some chargers and, you know, maybe one, one ind individual unit may have had issues, but with the rest of the units around, I was able to still get a successful charge. The kind of ironic thing is the, uh, the only if memory serves me correct, the only issue I had on the entire trip 
was the broken chargers just outside of Memphis. And that's where I had to ditch the car at the power company um, at the end of episode one. And I mean, thankfully that all worked out. That could have been even more of a disaster than it kind of already was. But it was charge point units that were broken, not Electrify America. And Electrify America kind of usually has the uh, reputation for not being reliable, et cetera, et cetera. But as I've shown through, I don't even know how many road trips I'm at right now with this car, but over 30,000 miles, um, which probably at least at least 15,000 to, to 16,000, something like that, have been on road trips and all pretty much exclusively used in the Electrify America network. And it's been excellent that, you know, I really no, really no true complaints. There's a couple, like I say, a couple times you get to a station and it can be a little fidgety um, connecting, but they've done a lot to improve their software uh, over the year that I've encountered, been dealing with them. And um, yeah, it's, it's become pretty great. I, I can't speak for other automakers yet. You know, I, I've, I've been certainly encountered some people having issues with their EV6s and Ionic 5s at a couple of charging stops I've been to. Um, that could just be that they're new owners and they're, maybe they're doing something incorrectly or maybe there still are some software updates that need to be rolled out to the chargers uh, for those cars since those cars are quite new. But what I've noticed with the Volkswagen is it's only gotten better with time and I think that makes sense because they're constantly improving the software and the car's been out for over a year now so they've had a chance to kind of work out all the bugs. So it's only getting only going to get better from here. The uh, the one thing I do have some concern about is there were a couple times on the trip where um, chargers were starting to get full, especially as I got out closer to California and out west. And as more and more people do buy these vehicles, I do potentially see an issue of the Electrify America network kind of being overwhelmed. Um, in my opinion, part of the problem is the uh, free charging that I spoke of. I mean, I love it. Uh, I I'm pretty sure that whatever car I buy next, I'll make sure it has the free charging too, just because for the amount of road trips I do, it adds up to thousands of dollars saved. I mean, like I said, I'll try to calculate some rough numbers of how much money was saved on this trip, but it's it, it adds up a lot. Um, but with that said, the negative of it is, there. while I was in Phoenix, uh, many days I noticed people uh, that were in like work, work uniforms, like um, scrubs or whatever, a couple times I'd run into the same people just come in and charge in their car every day and they're using Electrify America's free charging as the solution uh, rather than using it for what's kind of more intended for in my opinion. I mean, in my opinion, Electrify America is there to road trip across the country or road trip wherever and use the chargers for that and you should be using, you know, level one or level two chargers in your home garage or whatever. Um, yeah, in my opinion, if you don't have a, a home charging solution, the amount of inconvenience that it causes to have to go charge your car once or twice every single week uh, definitely is a hassle. And I kind of encountered that when I was in Phoenix for those for those two weeks. I basically, well, not basically, I did uh, exclusively DC charge the car um, as I needed throughout the week. And it, be it became quite an inconvenience not waking up with a full battery or 80% charged battery every day like I do here at home. So... That's the one uh, one downside is that Electro America is only going to get busier with time. But I know a lot of these uh, installations are commonly set up to leave space for expansion in the future. Um, at what rate they'll do, you do the expansions, I don't know. I mean, here I am in another charger that uh, it is Sunday night, but it's empty. There was an ID4 that was pretty much leaving as I showed up. Um, but today was a, a Sunday driving home from Nebraska. Yesterday was a Saturday driving from Salt Lake City to Nebraska, so ideally peak travel days. It's not like it was a Tuesday evening or something, you know. Um, so I should have expected to see more cars at the Chargers, and I didn't. So uh, that was, I mean, it worked out for me to not to not have to worry about, oh, no, there's only one station left. Is it going to work? You know, whenever I had an issue, I was able to jump over to another station. But uh, either way, I don't really know what else to say. I'm... Just happy with the car, happy with the trip. Already up to almost 50%, which is more than enough to get home and get to work tomorrow. And so I can level two charge it there. But I think I'm just gonna leave you there. I'll still roll the rest of the footage the way home. And like I said, include the rest of the data at the end of the video. But uh, if you haven't at this point, please do like the video and to subscribe to the channel. It's really, really helps 
uh, other people find our content. Uh, it's kind of the way YouTube works is the more likes, um, the more they kind of suggest the video to other people to, to take a look at it. So that really helps people learn from our experiences with the Volkswagen ID4 and uh, soon to come more vehicles coming to the channel. So um, again, thank you so much for all the uh, support you've given us this far. And we can't wait to show you where the channel is headed in the future.